Hello everyone. Welcome back to Basic Electrical and Electronics Engineering. Today, in this session, we are going to discuss EMF equation of transformer. That means how much EMF gets induced in primary and secondary winding of transformer. What are the factors on which this EMF depends? We are going to discuss that. So, let's get started. Here, we have discussed in the previous session, the transformer consists of a one core made up of magnetic material having low reluctance so that, so that the magnetic flux produced by primary winding can be easily passed through it. And we have these two windings, one is called as primary winding which is connected to AC supply and we have the secondary winding which is connected to the load. Okay? When we give supply to the primary winding, current starts flow through the primary winding and this current produces alternating flux which, which flows through this magnetic path and this flux links with the secondary winding and due to that EMF gets induced in the secondary winding which is used to which is connected to the load here bulb is used as a load so bulb will glow as EMF is induced in the secondary winding and the path is closed so current starts flowing and this bulb will grow, glow. This is the working principle of transformer we have discussed. Now how much EMF gets induced in this secondary winding also and this primary winding also we are going to derive that. According to Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction we have this expression E is equal to minus N d phi upon dt where n is the number of turns of a coil, d phi is the change in flux, dt is the change in time. So, d phi upon dt is the change in flux with respect to time. And this negative sign is due to Lenz law. We have discussed in the first unit statement of this Lenz law. So, we have this expression, full expression of EMF induced is equal to minus n d phi upon dt holds. Suppose, let n is equal to 1 that means we have only 1 turn then emf per turn will be what n is equal to 1 so minus d phi upon dt as we have discussed here that ac supply is connected to the primary so it produces or it circulates a current which is also alternating in nature ip and this ip produces this flux phi which is also alternating in nature that is changing with respect to time. It is alternating in nature and it is it, this shape is a sinusoidal. So, we can write phi is equal to phi m sin of omega t. Weber, okay? Phi is equal to phi m sin of omega t. Where phi m is the maximum flux value, omega is the angular frequency. Okay? So, Take derivative of this EMF per turn equals to this phi m is constant. So, taken outside this minus phi m as it is and this derivative of sin omega t is cos of omega t into with respect to deriving with respect to t only. So, omega is constant. So, omega into omega. Omega into cos of omega t is the derivative of this sin omega t this minus phi m as it is. Okay. So, EMF per turn will be minus phi m into omega into cos of omega t hold. This is the EMF per turn induced in the transformer. Now, we want the maximum EMF per turn. We have this EMF per turn as this minus phi m omega cos of omega t in terms of hold. Okay. So, we want the maximum value. So, maximum value will be this omega into phi m. Neglect this negative sign as we are taking only magnitude. So, omega into phi m. And we know that omega is equals to 2 pi f. 
so e max per turn will be equals to 2 into pi into f into phi m where f is the frequency of supply phi m is the maximum value of flux and it is measured in hold now we want we always represent voltage in rms value okay root means square value so take rms of this rms value of emf per turn equals to this e max divided by root 2 because we know that v rms equals to maximum value divided by root 2 we have this expression with us so rms value of this e per turn will be e max per turn divided by root 2 so we have this 2 pi f phi m divided by root 2 we will get this expression e rms is equal to 4.44 this f into phi m measured in holes this is the rms value of emf induced in the winding per turn for one turn we are getting this much magnitude of voltage suppose e1 let e1 will be the rms induced emf in primary winding with n1 number of turns we have this primary winding with n1 number of turns this this secondary winding is n2 number of turns so e1 will be RMS induced EMF in primary winding with N1 number of turns and E2 will be RMS induced EMF in secondary winding with N2 number of turns. Okay, as the turns increases, the voltage induced in that also increases. Suppose this is this is for one turn. So if we have 10 turns, then multiply it by 10. If we have 100 turns, then multiply it by 100. So like this. So E1 will be 4.44 into F into phi m into n1 as we are calculating e1 and e2 will be same 4.44 f phi m into n2 as we are calculating this e2 okay so these are the emf equations of transformer and this is the e1 is the emf induced in this primary winding and e2 is the emf induced in the secondary winding okay and this emf depends on which factors First factor is frequency, second is maximum flux value and third is number of turns. That means if these three are varied, the EMF induced in the transformer can be varied. Okay. If we increase the frequency, EMF will increase. If we increase the flux value, then also EMF will increase. And if we increase the increase this number of turns, the EMF also get increased. See here. See here, this we have n1 number of turns which kept constant and here we have n2 number of turns which are varied. As we vary the, as we increase the number of turns, the EMF, the magnitude of EMF also gets increased as compared to this primary. Primary number of turns and primary voltage we kept constant and we change the secondary number of turns. As we increase the number of turns, we get increase in voltage. As we decrease the number of turns compared to primary, we will get less amount of voltage okay in this way the emf depends on the number of turns of the winding and the emf is directly proportional to number of turns as we increase the turns emf will increase as we decrease the turns the emf will decrease this is the emf equations of equation of transformer let's solve one numerical based on this here question is a single phase transformer has 350 primary and 1050 that means 1050 secondary turns the primary is connected to 400 volt 50 hertz supply if the net cross sectional area of core is 50 centimeter square find first maximum value of flux density in the core and second is the voltage induced in the secondary winding so let's solve this first we will write the given data given data here we have this 350 primary terms so n1 is equal to 350 n2 is 1050 then we have this 
primary is connected to 400 volt so primary voltage 400 volt frequency given as 50 hertz and cross sectional area of core is given as a c of core is given as 50 centimeter square so convert it, it to a meter square to 10 power minus 4 meter square and what we want here we have to find the maximum value of flux density in the core that means phi m value we want and second we want the voltage induced in the secondary winding so voltage induced in the secondary winding so e2 we want okay so let's calculate it We know that we have EMF equation E is equal to 4.445 into F and N. If it is E1, then we have this N1 number of tons. If it is E2, then we have N2 number of tons. And we know that flux density phi m this is phi m equals to flux upon area okay bm upon this phi m upon cross sectional area so phi m will be bm into cross sectional area so right here t1 equals to 4.44 phi m instead of this phi m Instead of this phi m, we have now bm into cross section area into frequency into n1 number of tons. So put values here 4.44 into bm we want. Here ac is given as 50 into 10 power minus 4. Frequency is 50 and n1 number of tons is 50. Okay and e1 we have 400. So, from this equation, we can calculate the required flux density as 1.0296 Tesla. This is the required value of flux density. Here, we want the Bm value. We want maximum value of flux density, not flux. So, flux density Bm we get here as 1.0296 tesla this is first required value then second one is we want the voltage induced in the secondary winding so e2 will be we have same expression 4.44 into this is bm into ac into frequency here we want in secondary winding so n2 tons will be there so 4.44 into bm is 1.0296 into cross section area is given 50 into 10 power minus 4 into 50 frequency into this number of tons is 1050 so we will get this voltage induced in the secondary winding as approximately 1200 volt Okay, this much amount of voltage is induced in the secondary winding and this will increase in, this is the maximum flux density we require. These are the required values for this question. Okay, this is, this is all about the EMF equation of transformer, what are the factors uh, on which the EMF equation or EMF induced in the primary and secondary winding depends we have detail we have discussed in detail okay in the next session we will discuss various losses efficiency and voltage regulation of transformer so till then stay tuned and keep learning thank you